that's a pretty cool intro, huh? Yeah, I'm a pro. All right, well, anyways, today we are here at the Morris Jumel Mansion. This is a really exciting visit. We're gonna go to a little museum here in Washington Heights. Really crazy mansion that's been here since 1765. Uh, you know, this is, you got over 100 acres over here. I mean, you can imagine this land today uh, is probably worth like $18.9 trillion. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. We get to go in this museum, get to talk to some people, get to, you know, learn a little bit about the history of this place. Tons of history has passed through here from history, you know, with the British to the American Revolution to Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton, huh? To even like more modern stuff like Lin Manuel Miranda. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff we're going to cover, uh, but before we do that, guys, you know, check out the Patreon. Pretty cool, you know, that uh, supports the uh, channel, helps me uh, improve all these things. Uh, there's all these different levels and, you know, get extras there. Go figure, you know, mostly PG, of course. And uh, also, too, uh, you, know, um, you know, like the video, give it a little thumbs up, and uh, subscribe. Watch more than one of these, why not? Helps bump me in the analytics, baby, ahead of all the, uh, you know, I don't know, prank videos where they'd be coming here and like, I don't know, throwing, shooting it with paintballs or something. Isn't that, isn't that what they do on those videos, Eric? Hopefully not here. No, hopefully not here. Uh, anyways, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I don't know, I think we're gonna start and get tell you all the stories, do everything, meet some people. Uh, jump right in, what do you think, Eric? Let's jump right in. Let's jump. All right, so we're gonna go in this place. I've been given the key to the building, which is pretty uh, pretty cool. Got some very uh, very important uh, connections and network that I got. Uh, but before we do, just real quick, we're on the grounds of the Morris Jamel Mansion. It's actually on the second highest point in Manhattan, which is pretty cool. So you got really great views here. We're in Washington Heights right now, second highest point. Uh, first highest point being the NYU dorms. You know, yeah. get it? Uh, they, they smoke doobies all day. Uh, anyways. Uh, Really cool history here. So the Morrises had to give it up uh, because they were loyal to the British, uh, and you know they got they got it confiscated. You know, love it or leave it, baby. Love it or leave it, America. So they had to leave. Uh, and then it was actually Washington's headquarters during the Revolution. Then it was the British's headquarters. Then the Jumel family bought it in the early 1800s. We'll talk about all that as we go. So just keep in mind, this back then was very isolated. We were in Washington Heights. Uh, this is up in the 160s. Uh, and back then it was considered a summer home. This was outside of the city. It took like three hours by carriage to get down to lower Manhattan. So it was in a place that urban planners at the time would have called uh, the middle of nowhere. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's kind of a nice place, but we're gonna go inside and check it out now. Time to use the key, baby, and get in. <laughs> I got these connections. Let's do it, Eric, you ready? Well, I'm finally here in the uh, actual Morris Jumel Mansion. I'm in the octagon room, tastefully decorated. I'm not gonna keep rambling on my, on my own. I should bring someone who actually knows uh, what they're talking about a little more than I do. Uh, I have here with me Meg Lynch, who is the uh, director of the museum operations, is that correct? Museum operations manager. Sorry, uh, that was my fault. Uh, but uh, welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, nice, thanks nice for to, joining us. Nice to us. be here. Thank you so much. And so, what can you? Uh, we're we're now in the Octagon Room. We're in the in Morris Jumel Mansion. What can you tell us about this room to start? So the Octagon Room is believed to be the first octagonal room built in America, mm -hmm. and this was also built as a summer home. So uh, these windows would have also served as um, a colonial air conditioner. Um, and then. George Washington used the house as his headquarters. Oh, you guys ever heard of George Washington? Weeks. He's the guy on the one dollar bill. Trivia. There's some good trivia. Yeah. But we're going to talk about him in a little bit. Well, perfect. Uh, I guess we covered the octagon room. I guess now we can just bounce around the uh, mansion and take a look. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. And we are in the war room of George Washington. Pretty cool. This is where he actually set up kind of shop for uh, five weeks before evacuating uh, New York City pretty much for the remainder of the uh, American Revolution. So I guess setting that up, how, how did he end up here as the, uh, as the headquarters? Uh, well, he fought the Battle of Brooklyn and yep. lost yep. Yep. terribly. Uh, and you know, we talked about this in the Brooklyn Heights video. If you guys want to check that out, but that's uh, <laughs> that, that. Yeah, that's kind of what he did. He evacuated and he came here, mm -hmm. came to the island of Manhattan, New York City at the time, and then they started making their way out of Manhattan, pretty much, right to the north. So he comes up here to the countryside, likely knew about the house already because he had fought alongside uh, Roger Morris during the French and Indian War. 
Granted, as you said, he abandons New York a couple weeks later um, yeah. entirely, and it is run by the British for the remainder of the war, uh, but it was a good go of it. And this house became the headquarters for the British. Well, and the, the headquarters. So they're here for seven years, Washington's here right. for five weeks, and yet he gets all the credit. So I like to kind of say, you know, the founding fathers were uh, not flawless men, and... Far from flawless, I would Yes, say, far yeah. from yeah. flawless, uh, considering most of them were enslavers. Um, yeah, yeah, that's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> to put it mildly. Well, you have a you have a cool little uh I do. Thing here. Let so, me, let's take um a look at this. So this is a British cannonball that was shot at the house and essentially had Washington's name on it. You know, they were the main goal was kill this one guy and the whole thing will fall apart and uh, it was found not too far away. How much do you think this goes for these days? I couldn't even begin to guess. What's it feel like? I'd say it feels like uh, $750,000 in my hand right now. That's my guess. This is a great, you know, introduction here to the house, Washington's war room, pretty cool. I say we go to the next spot and go to where uh, Washington continued his uh, war activities. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll hold on to this, thank you very I'll much. I'll take that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, next spot, what do you think? <laughs> next spot? Do you maybe need to give the cannonball back before we leave? Yeah. All right, fine. You, you can't go. take home the cannonball, sorry. All right. So now we're in the dining room, and uh, after the revolution, Washington came back, right? He was doing what I like to refer to as a revolutionary victory lap, visiting sure. all of the hot spots of the war. You gotta rub it in. You mm -hmm. gotta let him know who won the thing. That's yeah. very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then here in 1790 specifically, there was a very big dinner, possibly, correct? So the, it, the dinner was definitely hosted at the house. Um, and it wasn't just the men uh, who would later become mm -hmm. Washington's first cabinet, you know, his advisors, Hamilton, Henry Knox, uh, Jefferson Adams, that whole crew, but also their wives, right. Abigail Adams, Eliza Hamilton, Eliza Hamilton. Uh, Lucy Knox, all of these women were also here. But, you know, traditionally women have been written out of the founding narrative and that we're really trying to remedy that. And also too, interesting fact, the, the, because the dinner happened here in July, that was shortly after the, the compromise in June. Exactly. With, with, with Hamilton, Madison, and Jefferson, where the capital of the United States was kind of, they say, was beginning to be decided in return for uh, Hamilton's ability to assume the debts of the states exactly. for the federal government. This was done on June 20th. It was mm -hmm. June 20th, uh, which is my birthday. Oh, you know? happy birthday. Mine yeah. is June 19th. No way. Yes. Come on. Look at that. We didn't, there even, we go. We didn't even set that up. That's a, that's a total coincidence. Mine is Juneteenth. Um, Look at that, Juneteenth. Which celebrates the the um, enslaved people in Texas who didn't right. get the tweet or the text message like, hey, you're free now. Um, yeah. so. Elon Musk blocked it. He blocked the tweet. <laughs> I say we go to the next, next spot. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so now we're back out in the hallway, here mm -hmm. in the main hallway, uh, and we're next to a picture of good old Eliza Jumel. Uh, and Eliza actually grew up in poverty, so with their... Uh, she lived in a brothel, right? Like for a little bit, is that correct, with um, her mother? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. She lived in what was referred to as a house of ill repute. However, if you were a single woman living alone, you were running a house of ill repute. Right. Okay. Even worse, perhaps, than being born in a brothel, she was an actress. Um, yep. Actors are so annoying. Yeah. yeah. No, not only was Eliza Jamil an actress, but she marries a merchant, new money. Uh, so she's trying to, you know. Gross. Yes, absolutely. Yikes. Yeah. So she's trying to sort of like climb that very narrow social ladder mm -hmm. of uh, 19th century New York and probably buys this house in efforts to make herself seem more valid. Right. Um, and she also, because of that, you were saying she wanted to decorate the house. And one of the things she included was fancy furniture. The, mm, like Duncan absolutely. Five furniture. Some of it is, is around the house here. Uh, and, and like a, a piece like this, for example, uh, this couch, how much would this sell for today? Um, probably at least 250 million, if, or 250,000, 250 250, if right, not Eric, closer. let's take it and get out of here. <laughs> if not closer to, to yeah, half a million, half a million it, it would gotcha. go for quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go to the next room and talk about how she took that climbing and everything to the next step? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. All right, so now we're in the parlor room. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that it's interesting to, to note that Eliza changed her name. That was actually a name she gave herself when she moved to New York, right? She was born Betsy Bowen in Betsy Bowen. Providence, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, she changed her name when she moved to New York like so many people. She could have just, you know, gotten a septum piercing or something, but, you know, she changed her name. Trying to be, trying to be cool and interesting, right? So anyways, we're here, <laughs> we're here in the parlor room. And the cool thing about this room, we were talking about her climbing. This is where she was married to her next husband, which was Aaron Burr. Yes. Uh, so in Eliza's first husband dies in 1832. Right. And a mere 14 months later, she marries former Vice President Aaron Burr. 
Oh, so they got married here. The marriage doesn't last very long. She files for divorce eventually, right? They separate after a few months. Mm -hmm. And then there's a huge legal battle. Uh, she chooses uh, her legal counsel well. She hires Alexander Hamilton Jr. as one of her attorneys. In case you don't know, that's the son of Alexander Hamilton uh, Sr., who was killed by Ehrenberg in a duel in 1804. Mm, so kind of interesting how that comes around. And she files the, the papers officially on... That the anniversary. She files the divorce papers on the 30th anniversary of uh, Burr actually killing Alexander Hamilton in their duel over in Weehawken, New Jersey. Kind of nuts, you know? That's kind of a little bit of like a, you know, stick it to him, you know? Yeah, you don't mess with Eliza Jamel. Yeah, of course. Well, this is very, very uh, beautiful. It's a really cool room. I, I say we, uh, we keep moving. I say we go upstairs to, to the other rooms, huh? What do you think? All right, so now we are in uh, what would have been, right, Aaron Burr's bedroom. Mm -hmm. This is the bed he would have slept in. This is the room he would have hung out in uh, and dreamt about killing Alexander Hamilton, right? The truth is, uh, Jamel family lore states that Burr actually wandered around these halls saying things like, you know, if, if Hamilton came up in conversation, which he would have, mm -hmm. you know, oh, my friend Hamilton, whom I shot. Yeah. Um, so even, even up until the end of his life, you know, Burr refers to Hamilton as, as his, friend. his friend. Yeah, it's uh, an important thing to note that they were kind of like tied all throughout, through a lot of their life. I mean, even Burr defeated his father-in-law for a Senate seat. Mm -hmm. He, he, uh, they, they defended like one of the biggest murder cases in the early country's history. They both worked on the same team, mm -hmm. uh, Julie Elma Sands' uh, murder case. They were, they both had banks. Mm -hmm. They both, you know, they both, uh, they were just rivals, uh, you know, and it was, it was an interesting thing. They were always tied together and, you know. But they, they started you know, out as friends. They started out as friends. And I think it's important to keep in mind, like, Hamilton had a family, a wife and a family who would have worked hard to preserve his legacy. Most of Burr's family, with the exception of Eliza Jamel, right. had died long before he marries Eliza mm -hmm. Jamel. Um, so there was really nobody to help preserve his legacy, which is why he kind of ends up, you know, in the shadows and being written into um, the role of the villain. Yeah. Uh, most notably, perhaps, by... Lynn manuel Miranda, mm, who wrote parts of Hamilton good, in this room. Now that's what we call a transition in the biz because we're <laughs> sitting next to, or we're standing next to a chair that uh, Lynn manuel Miranda sat in to write uh, a couple of the songs, right? To the, to the uh, yeah. To the, so he wrote play. Burr's portion of uh, My Shot mm -hmm. and um, the room where it happens mm -hmm. in this room. Can you sing one for us? Uh, you would lose viewers if I began singing right now. Yeah. Um, but you can check him out on SoundCloud. Uh, check him out on SoundCloud. <laughs> Let's plug his SoundCloud. We're plugging Lim Manuel's SoundCloud on our video. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I mean, uh, it's cool. You can make make up a song like something like you know, we're in uh, Aaron Burr's boudoir, going for the revolution. Hamilton. We should probably all get cut. <laughs> but uh, well, that's cool. It's good. You're giving us another side of the story. We like to get the yeah. balance here. Well, so that's my. We we do get a lot of Hamilton fans who come to visit and see the grand chair. Of course, it's important to keep in mind that they were people. They were humans. Um, you know, Aaron Burr experienced tremendous loss in mm -hmm. his life. Uh, he he was just a guy. Um, He's and, just a guy. And he wasn't an enslaver. That's true. And he tried to abolish slavery way before New York ever did. So WWBD. What would Burr do? Just ask yourself that whenever you're hanging out and questioning your life. All right, so now we are in uh, the bedroom of Eliza Jumel. Right? Mm -hmm. So Eliza would have lived here for the longest period of time. Mm -hmm. She lived here for 55 years, mm -hmm. died in the very bed that sits in this room. In that bed. And, and so also, too, I think this is an interesting time to mention that this house is supposedly haunted, right? Purportedly haunted. Yeah. That's that's the word we use, purportedly. purportedly. Uh, you know, we can't <laughs> necessarily prove it, but um, in 1964, we had a school group uh, touring the house. Mm -hmm. The educator was late. The house was all locked up. She arrived um, and the teacher said, I think we disturbed the woman in the house in, in the costume. And the educator said, we don't do costumes here. There, there's no one in the house. I, I've got the keys. I'm going to go open up. And when she asked further, you know, she, this, the teacher said this woman came out onto the balcony and, and shouted, you know, be quiet or leave. Then the children came upstairs to the second floor, which is where the grand portrait that we saw um, in the main hall had been housed at the time. And the kids all said, oh, my God, that's her. Whoa. Um, and the educator said, guys, that's Eliza Jamel. She's been dead for 99 years. 
This story makes it into the newspaper. Hans Holzer, who's a parapsychologist professor at NYU, Ghostbusters was essentially, sure. you know, uh, created after his antics and his uh, adventures. And he came here and investigated and purportedly got a hold of Eliza Jamel and Stephen Jamel. Uh, if ghosts exist, they would exist in a house like this. Or they, you know, maybe it's haunted by some of the school groups who came and some of the kids who, you know, didn't really enjoy their time here or something. They're like, screw this. After they died, they came back and they're like, I'm never going on a field trip again. And they just haunt the place. Uh, they could be haunted by grifters. Could be, could be I mean, like most things in New York. All the subway platforms are haunted by grifters uh, now. So, um, well, anyways, uh, well, uh, I guess this is it. I guess we'll go down to the last stop from here. It was a pretty, pretty cool spot. All right, let's go back downstairs. Uh, we're at the uh, gift shop. I guess my question is, why do you believe it's important to study this? At part of history. That's a great question. So it actually kind of ties into what we talked Thank about you. with um, Hamilton and Burr. Mm -hmm. You know, people in throughout New York history, American history, world history, they're dealing with the same things that we're dealing with. They hold grudges, they fall in love, they get angry, they, you know, uh, stage revolutions. Um, <laughs> they get angry, they stage revolutions. Yeah, <laughs> it's ma ma quite a maybe, jump. maybe you shoot and kill your, your best friend. What would you say your takeaway is of the museum? I would say it's important to keep in mind that history is ever evolving and it is not set in stone. Um, history uh, is revised and edited and re-revised. That's right. That's right. And get off your phones for a second. Huh? Put the phone down. Get off the, you know, the LinkedIn or whatever, the MySpace. Get off the YouTube. Don't get off the YouTube. Oh, okay. when, once you're done watching this, then you can get off the YouTube. But, uh, but otherwise, you know, get off the other stuff. Once you're done with the Patreon, maybe get <laughs> <laughs> Don't get ahead of it. We're getting ahead of ourselves now. Uh, all right, cool. Well, and I guess uh, I'll be getting out of your hair here. Uh, I guess, I guess you're going to let me out. Yep. All right. Well, that's the that's the end of the visit. Thank you so much for having us, Meg. You're very welcome. You guys, thank you guys for watching, making it this far. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, check out the Patreon. Come on, it helps out. It's a you know, there's some extras on there. <laughs> you know, all PG and everything. You can also too. You can uh, you can uh, like the video, subscribe, do that whole thing. We learned a lot today. It was pretty cool. We got to learn about you know the Morrises. We learned about Washington, the British. We learned about Eliza Jumel. We learned about Hamilton. We learned about Burr. We learned about Lin Manuel Miranda. We covered a lot. So uh, thank you. All right, well, I guess with that, I'm gonna get back on the train, head my trek back to Ridgewood. Uh, I'll see you later, thanks Sounds again. Sounds good. See ya. Um, can I have the cannonball back, please? Thank you. Can I, I can't take this? You can't take it. But it's, it's just like a big metal thing, I could. I 250 year old I, British cannonball, can't have it. Sorry. I, are you sure? Yep, yep. Patreon's not big enough for that yet. It's more reason to join the Patreon. <laughs> for a cannibal. All right. Bye.